here at uh, Victoria Road. It's West Ham United 1, Manchester United 3. Kate Longhurst uh, in the wars in the first half. You can see the bandage there. What exactly do you think, Jane, Matt Beard will have said at halftime? Look, it's always a challenging one to answer, though, because I don't really know what the game plan is, the details of it. But from what I'm observing right now, you know, to, some key areas for me. Transitionally, when they lose the ball, they need to affect the player on the ball quicker and, and make sure their backline tightens up quickly so there's not gaps to play through in central areas. That's a definite one for me. And then you flip and you go in possession. They need to take care of the ball better. You know, they have created a couple of opportunities, but I'm sure he would have wanted more. Well, Jilly Flaherty saying beforehand that West Ham must be assertive, driven and clinical. Well, Alessia Russo enjoyed her first half. Two goals for Russo. Yeah, and completely agree with what was said half-time uh, about Russo. I think she's been one of the standout performers for Manchester United today. Really good hold-up play when she's needed to and good finishing too. In and around the box, she's, she's, she's a threat. No changes then for either side at half-time. It will be West Ham, the home side, that will kick off this second half in their uh, familiar pink home shirts. Shooting away to our left-hand side. Manchester United in there. How would you describe that, Jane? Charcoal grey? Yeah, I think I'd go with charcoal grey. Charcoal grey. Shooting away to our right-hand side. And uh, Ockvist with the throw in the early exchanges of this second half. Interesting to see the intensity now the West Ham come out with. Are they coming out to try and get back in this game, you know, lift their level, levels up? I'm sure that's what Matt Beard would have challenged them with before he's left that changing room now, half-time. Fisk, back to our Arnold. Von Eggman, the goal scorer, coming deep, playing it back to Fisk. Reddish now will go long this time. Picked up by Daly. Toon again, and they fed it through to Russo, but the flag is up. This time she's offside. Well, I'm hoping for a West Ham uh, fan perspective, that's not the trend that's going to set in again. You know, we're seeing them giving the ball away way too easily in the middle third of the pitch. And then you set off Man United for a quick transition straight through the middle again. And they have got the players clearly to punish you as well, Manchester United. So the second half really starting in a similar vein to the first. Arnold elects to go long. West Ham do win the throw. Daly looked to take it quickly. Found Longhurst in the end. Here is Longhurst, but uh, almost given back to Manchester United. Is that a high boot from Toon? She's in the wars today, isn't she, Longhurst? She's had a clump in the head already. She's got a massive egg on. And then I think she just had a boot in the face. But she's still playing. She's still up and around it. And she is still, obviously, the, the character I, I remember playing against. She's getting stuck in in uh, the centre of midfield this afternoon. Kate Longhurst. Yeah, and it's good to see her still playing at this level. Like I said earlier, play, played against her many times when she was a lot younger and I was, I was one of the older ones. Um, and, you know, she does have a work cut out today against this midfield of Manchester United who are technically very strong and they move the ball quick. So, you know, defensively, as we've mentioned earlier, they need to be better as a midfield three in there. Um, but interesting challenge for them now, you know. Second half, can they get these two goals back or even more? They did create a couple of opportunities first half, but they are going to need their midfield to play a part if they are going to get back in this game. Heath uh, going to ground after uh, some fancy footwork. Flaherty to uh, Darley. Looking for a daily up against uh, Turner. Gets the cross in. Leon was there. And still West Ham have the opportunity with Longhurst. He just is outnumbered. Good hold, good hold up play again there from Russo, you know. Sideways on, holding Jilly Flaherty off, holding the centre back out the way. Flag has stayed down and Heath has the opportunity. 
It's comfortable in the end for Arnold, though. Oh, great opportunity again. I think, you know, when she looks back, she'd question that first touch. Could it have been slightly better to go in front of her rather than to the right? Because it didn't really set her up for that strike, did it? You could see her shoulders just drop a little bit. Good opportunity, though. And at the other end, West Ham causing problems for Manchester United. Yeah, inches, inches too far in front of the on-run and lay on there. But good drive down the wide area from Daly. Toon. Last touch came off Toon, and it's behind for a goal kick. Well, these two sides have met twice before, winning one apiece. West Ham in the WSL last season, winning the home game 3-2. As Heath picks it up for Manchester United. Russo feeds it through for Toon, who deflects it wide. Again, it's a pinch, and they're off, aren't they? Lots of space for them to use in central areas again. Heath has pinched you, ball in. Oh, it's a little bit of a scrappy one, but Russo makes it uh, look far better than it was. And then great set in for Toon, unfortunately for her. I think she had a little bit more time than she expected. Potentially could have gone round the goalkeeper at that point, but uh, just wide. It was a lovely ball, wasn't it, from uh, Russo in behind Flaherty. Yeah, again, it just highlighted the disorganised backline of West Ham, especially on that transition moment. You know, lots of spaces between centre-backs for, for the grey shirts today for utili to utilise. Longhurst flicks it on. Thomas will give chase. This is Thomas now. Picked up by... Uh, Dali, looking for uh, Van Egmond again. Yeah, and it's definitely a, a main game plan for West Ham, isn't it? Get the ball into a wide area, allow time for the centre mid, Van Egmond, to get in the box and hopefully put good deliveries into, onto the top of her head, as we saw with the goal they've created so far today. Well, Emily Van Egmond closing in on 100 caps for Australia, providing the main threat, really, for Matt Beard's side this afternoon. And it's a heavy touch from Reddish. And you see Matt Beard there again, urging Reddish to, to forget that, move on, go again. Yeah, and they have relied on their attacking centre mids for their goals so far this season. I believe Daly's had a couple, and obviously uh, Van Egmond, the other centre mid today, has been on the score sheet. So, you know, good, great from a midfield perspective that they utilise in that way, but I'm sure they would like their forwards to get in on the act at some point too. Kenza Daly getting the uh, goal up at Everton last weekend in that 3-1 defeat. One ball over the top. That's a bit of a heavy touch from Leon. He'll give chase. Good defending by Turner, but West Ham do have the throw. And here is uh, Kenza Dali. Daly looks to uh, looks to take it quickly. Longhurst under pressure from Heath. Toons there as well. Look how many grey shirts are around West Ham and they've won it back. It's effective pressing, isn't it, from Manchester United, you know, to keep the ball on one side of the pitch and get numbers and bodies around there to disrupt the build-up play from West Ham. And waiting for mistakes like we just saw from Longhurst. West Ham get away with it this time. That line will work it back to Arnold. Colton's header goes out of play. Well, 
Will she be happy from the first eight, nine minutes, second half? I'm not sure the standards that she set. She'd probably expect a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit scrappy at times when they're in possession of the ball, but they are pressing well, Man United. And they are defending here because West Ham trying to get their way back into this match. It's a cross looking for Thomas. Lay on to Dali, but it was a bit of miscommunication and a late challenge there from West Ham on Jackie Gronan. She looks hurt right now, doesn't she? Obviously, late challenge, man, Eggman thinking she can get contact on the ball, but she does have her studs up, and that, you know, this day and age, studs up is potentially uh, you're going in the book. And it will be the first booking of the match. I think he had a good think about that first, didn't he? Uh, the official today, uh, but probably the right decision with the rulings uh, that we have in the game these days. It will be Emily Van Egmond who committed the uh, the foul. I think uh, Van Egmond is trying to protest her innocence, but it was spotted by Ryan Atkin. It was a committed challenge, wasn't it? Well, she'll be fairly happy with her game so far today, again on the score sheet. Um, but, you know, you say that you flip it defensively, their midfield needs to be better to stop opportunities for, for Manchester United. Here we see the tackle again, a little bit late. Obviously, she's one of the bigger uh, central midfield players on the pitch. And, and that long, rangy leg is something Gronan wasn't expecting to come at her, I don't think. Well, Emily Van Egmond has played at three World Cups for Australia. Gronin is back to her feet. And Van Egmond is the first name in the book. Defensive organisation, a little bit different from West Ham. They're just going with the one centre forward, trying to split the centre backs uh, and trying to keep ball on one side and, and then utilising their winger a little bit narrower. Whereas earlier they were using the 10 Dali to go and support the number nine and play as two forwards defensively. So a little bit of a tactical change there from West Ham. Interesting to see if they continue that way because look, they have probably made that decision because first half, Manchester United were managing to slide balls through the central areas, which is obviously a problem for teams, uh, and just allows them to have another player in midfield behind that forward right now. Well, you can see here, Jane, it's a roll of the dice from Matt Beard with a triple substitution. We'll uh, wait for that to take place because West Ham are coming forward. Leon. Good shooting opportunity, again created herself, forcing the save from uh, Mary Earps. Yeah, and it seemed to be, I think the goalkeeper saw that a little bit late because it seemed like an easy take for her, but look, good feet on the edge of the box, create a little pocket of space for herself, and then we see Mary Earps just pushing it around the corner. Manchester United have a corner to defend. Headed goalwards, but comfortable for Earps. Longhurst does really well to release Leon, who in turn releases Flaherty up from the back. Interesting to see that one back, if we do, because uh, edge of box. Mind you, Jilly Flaherty didn't make too much of it, but it did seem like it could have made contact with uh, Manchester United hand there. Rachel Daly has gone over to uh, take the corner. Flaherty has remained up from the back. Of course, Van Egmond is there as well, having already scored with her head. That's one from the training ground. It is Flaherty, but the layoff is snuffed out by Heath. And now we can uh, expect the triple substitution. 
coming off firstly is uh, Martha Thomas, her first league start of the season, being replaced by Katerina Svitkova. Also coming off is Adriana Leon to be replaced by Alicia Lehman. And uh, So Hyun Cho will be the third player coming on. Replacing Kate Longhurst. So, Matt Beard with a triple substitution, Jane. Yeah, and look, he said at the start of the game, it's great to have more, his more senior players back and back fit because he's missed them the last few games. And, uh, you know, they are quality, uh, top-level players, uh, which any team would miss. And it's good that he can now get them back on the pitch. But, look, he's, he needs them now to change a game for him, doesn't he? So, a roll of the dice then early on. It's still uh, more than 30 minutes remaining in this match. Vetteline to Fisk. Cho. We can just see that Cho has, has fitted into that deeper midfield role, just sitting in front of the back line. Um, more than likely a bit of a ball player. Oh, not with that touch, though. I think I give her the kiss of death just at that point, didn't I? Commentator's but, curse, it's oh, called. Oh, gosh, yes. Technically, good player, you know, can help build through the thirds for them and uh, will need to have a good uh, 30 minutes here to change this game for West Ham. Well, Kirsty Hansen is coming on for Manchester United. It's a to Tobin Heath after scoring her first goal in English football who will make way. Straight swap, Jane? More than likely, I'd imagine so, yes. And again, you know, we spoke in, eh, at, at length earlier about the depth of this Man United squad now. There are lots of good players who are uh, relatively fit and healthy right now for Casey to, Stoney to select. Here's Lehman for West Ham, one of those uh, substitutes. Russo up against uh, Fisk. Good game from her so far. Uh, I'm sure she'll want more, but you know, good hold up play, playing as that central forward for Man United today. But obviously, we see Heath just departing. She's had a great game too and uh, been very effective in defence and attack for Manchester United. Manchester United do have a corner. Russo is lurking. Cleared by Dali. Given away by Cho. Zellem. That's a teasing cross, but uh, I think the flag was up for offside. And West Ham have taken it quickly. line back to Fisk oh Flaherty almost lets it run out in fact she does Tobin Heath makes her way to the bench after getting her first goal in English football to put Manchester United 2-0 up earlier on in the first half Good day's work from her. She's up and running. 
in English football. And Katie Zellum will go over to take this free kick. Good solid header there from Cho, first contact, but they haven't got rid of it yet. Turner with the chance to uh, cross the centre half in an advanced position. Hansen offering support. Turner up against Reddish. Sikova's there as well. And in the end, they force the free kick. Not a bad option to have on your bench for Manchester United. No, lots of strength and depth for them this year. Hansen feeds it through for Russo, who's just offside. That was potentially the chance for the hat trick. Yeah, didn't look much in that, did they? On, on first look at that, uh, but good line from West Ham, obviously. Oh, winches there, yeah. You can just see a foot placement just slightly ahead of Julie Flaherty's there. Timing not quite right from Russo. Well, that time it goes against Russo, but she's still got 25 minutes to try and find the uh, hat trick. Van Eggman just loses out. Manchester United come again. Looking for Hansen in behind. Lehman goes down. Hayley Ladd just uh, preparing to come on for Manchester United. Drop to the bench for this match after starting in the victory over Tottenham. Yes, and as a Welsh manager, I'm uh, fairly happy that she's having limited time today so that she is going to be lovely and fresh when I see her later on tonight. Hopefully fit and healthy. Hansen crosses in looking for Russo, but that's too close to Arnold. Just that final detail of pass again we're seeing from West Ham, you know, needs to be better. They, have, they get bodies going forwards together at times and there's the pass options, but they're not uh, managing to complete. But well, it's picked up here and there's a shooting opportunity, but it's dragged wide in the end. Yeah, and daly has been part of a few of the breaks they've had, you know, a couple of minutes ago, the instance in wide area, she's breaking, but again, detail of pass and here she has a good opportunity, maybe not realising the amount of time she had there. To be fair, probably didn't have much support to be able to utilise, but could have gone on a, a little bit further herself. So Katie Zellum makes way to be replaced by Hayley Ladd, someone, as you say, Jane, you know rather well. Yeah, look, Haley's a fantastic individual and great player too. Can play in, in back lines or in midfield and one of the best 1v1 defenders I know uh, in the game uh, at this day and age. More than 50 caps as well for Wales. She's a main part of our squad and has been for numerous years and hopefully will be for many years to come too. She found herself on the bench, as I say, after starting against Tottenham. Yeah, what, what Casey Stoney has collected in that midfield area is just variability with the types of players she has in there, which gives her, gives her good options against different types of teams that they come up against. As I've mentioned, obviously, Hayley Ladd is more of a defensive midfielder, but can play further up, but will just do a slightly different job to others if given that role. West Ham with Fisk.
Vetterlein. That's a good tackle by Hansen. And Russo in behind. Arnold has come to tidy up, and it was good alert goalkeeping. Yeah, good start position from her, obviously being right depth there to be able to affect balls like that, which allows a, a back line to stay a little bit higher. Toon trying to win that back for Manchester United. They've worked at West Ham to Vetterlein. Cho doing really well there under pressure in a defensive third. Fisk. Flaherty under a bit of pressure, works it to Arnold. It's confident defending by Manchester United in the shape of Millie Turner. Spitkova. Yeah, good pressing, good defensive organisation today from Manchester United, which is what you'd expect from an international centre-back being in charge of them, I guess. Um, but look, it is. They're, they're in control. Even when they don't have the ball, you know, they're forcing West Ham into areas or they're forcing them to play hit and hold balls longer and they're managing to win first contact in those situations. 20 minutes to play. Manchester United still have the 3-1 uh, advantage. Not too many incidents to note in this second 45. Set playbook we see being uh, looked at uh, and studied here. Obviously, another change uh, about to happen. Uh, interesting with coaches these days. Sometimes it's still the, the paper. Sometimes it's the iPads these days, depending on how, how high tech you are. Manchester United win it back. It's cleared by uh, Turner. Fisk, as West Ham once more build from the back. That's given away cheaply, but West Ham now have some defending to do, and Vetterlein works it back to Arnold, but again, Jane, West Ham really giving it away in the wrong part of the field. It really yeah. has been the story of this match. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I think um, we just see, oh, we see this attack now from Manchester Black United. stays down, Hansen is onside, waiting for some support. Turner. Toon, back to our Hansen. West Ham get it clear, and the shot is smacked over by Millie Turner. And you can see Man United defensively, they're allowing West Ham to build with their centre-backs. They're allowing them a bit of time on the ball, but because they, what they've seen so far in this you know, first 73 minutes of the game is they're allowing them the time because they are making errors when they're looking to play forwards. So a substitution for uh, West Ham then. Lois Joel, a defender, a full-back, is uh, coming on. 21-year-old, signed after a year in North Carolina. And Laura Vetterlein is the player who's come off, so a straight swap in that West Ham defence. Challenging games for fullbacks when they're coming up against this front line of Man United uh, with the strength and depth they have, you know, the pace they have and the technicians they have out there. So fullbacks do have to have good games when they come up against them and be effective. And they're so interchangeable, aren't, aren't they? The, the Manchester United forward line, as we mentioned, can play through the middle on the left, on the right. Never quite know who you're going to be marking or up against. No, and it's great to have that flexibility and it can cause defensive lines uh, big problems as we've seen today at different times. Rachel Daly talks her way into the referee's notebook. And 
and West Ham have a corner to defend. Toon will take. The two turners up from the back. It's breaking Pat, six yard area. Hansen picks it up for Manchester United, but she's not got much support. Does well to win another corner. Yeah, very well there from Hansen to, to, to uh, create something in that wide area and get something from it again in that 2v1 situation. Interesting with the, the Man United corner, obviously they're congregating, as you said, in the six yard and dragging all the defenders in. But then they're pulling out at uh, the last notice to, to create some space for themselves in around penalty area. Interesting to see if they do it from this side of the pitch. The pressure they are putting Arnold under as well, right on the goal line. Ryan Atkin has spotted something that he's not happy with, just delaying this corner. Here it comes. It's another good header, and it wasn't far away. Well, I believe it's a free header as well. Uh, so, uh, be disappointed not to get the goal from this situation. You see Turner, I believe it is, getting a bit of a nudge in the back, which might have put her off at the last minute, to be fair. But free header for her to redirect into the back of the net. She scored an almost identical goal against Spurs last week. Header across the face of goal that looped into the top corner. <laughs> Another substitution, a double substitution. Lucy Staniforth and Christian Press will be coming on. So Lucy Staniforth on for Ella Toon. Press is also on. And that's that strength in depth that you were speaking about, uh, Jane, because Russo on two goals goes off and Christian Press comes on. Yeah, lovely to have a player at that level to come on uh, in the last 15 minutes, isn't it, for them? Galton running up against Joel. Joel, the uh, young defender with her first real touch of the match, gives it away to Ladd. Ladd floats the cross in, but it's too high, and that'll be a West Ham goal kick. Well, Hayley Ladd will be disappointed with that final detail there. Good to win it back, but disappointed with that cross into the box. But, um, yeah, interesting last 15 minutes for West Ham, you know, coming up against uh, a World Cup winner now in the front line for uh, Man United. Should I... Another World Cup winner, I should say, because obviously one's already been yeah. on the pitch for a big chunk. And, and just looking at uh, Russo now, I think she's had a fantastic game today and uh, a couple of goals, but a hold-up play, how she's brought others into play, especially her wide players at different times, you know, good time and a movement from her, good hold-up play and strength to keep the centre-backs out away from the ball when she's needed to, but good time and of runs into the box and obviously contact situations when she's needed to put the ball in the back of the net too. Ever tempted as a manager to keep, keep a player on when they're on two goals? I think it's a bigger picture now these days, isn't it? Especially when you have the squad depth of the likes of Man United. I think it is about making sure you keep people fit and healthy and you give other players opportunities to play too. And obviously that's in the mind of, of Casey Stoney. And there may be some other areas she's considering as well in a sense of um, opportunities to create you and, and areas to expose West Ham. Because look, each player she brings on, they're top level players, but they have slightly different strengths too. Christian Press with her first real touch actually gives the ball away and West Ham will have a free kick. Christian Press, a two-time World Cup winner. Now on the field of play with Manchester United, looking to see this game out. West Ham, though, looking to set up perhaps a nervy finish. 12 minutes to play, they have a free kick. Still trailing 3-1.
Von Egmond and uh, Fisk, perhaps the uh, obvious targets for this one, is towards Von Egmond. Lehman goes alone. It wasn't far away in the end. Well, she did create herself a couple of yards of space, didn't she, to get a shot off, but poor end product in the end. But look, she just gets away from Turner. You create a little pocket of space, but couldn't keep the ball down. Yet to score this season, Alicia Lehman signed a new two-year deal ahead of this uh, current campaign. Yeah, and thinking back to last season, she was very effective in West Ham colours, you know, scored a few, fair few goals to what I remember and obviously created a few for others. So, you know, good addition to the squad when she joined them. Turner flicks it on. Fisk intercepts. Worked out to Galton, up against Reddish. Galton's got Hansen in the box, but just overruns the ball. Yeah, we haven't seen too much of that from her today, to be fair. She had a really effective game on the flank and, uh, you know, she's always looking to go at people in 1v1 situations, always looking to play forwards. Um, very effective uh, wide play from her today. Delightful cross as well for that third goal. Ten minutes then for West Ham to try and get something from this match, this WSL encounter. They left it late against Man United last season. The cross comes in, Turner will get that clear, but she got the luck of the, the bounce, really. Oh, she did, but she didn't have much help, to be fair. She had a 2v1 uh, far post to deal with, and luckily for her, the ball fell to her. Oh, great opportunity for West Ham in that moment, but not quite able to make the most of it. Good strong challenge from Hansen. On Svitkova. Well, look, they've got fresh legs on this pitch right now, so the energy level should be high. And you can see, obviously, he's trying to motivate them and, and tactically move people around to try and get them back in this game. Joel. Well worked. Good strength into uh, Van Egmond. Flaherty. Works out to Reddish. Ronan gets it away for Manchester United. That's a slightly wayward one, and Lehman almost had half an opportunity. Fisk. Good interception by Hansen. And you sense that West Ham have perhaps just picked up the tempo slightly as we enter the final 10 minutes. Yep, the fresh legs are definitely making an impact right now. Floated cross in, looking for Van Egmond, making that run in behind, but it was just over hit. Yeah, it's been one of the major ploys, isn't it, in possession for West Ham today, you know, get the ball into wide areas and allow Van Egmond time to get up there and look to, to hit it aerially. And, and obviously the goal came from it, but they would have liked uh, more to have come from it through the game. Hit long, looking for press. That's a nice touch. Track, difficult one for her to deal with, but great for West Ham, they're back in this game. And really, they've created very little in this second half. But now they are just a goal behind against Manchester United. As Hansen skips away from Joel, waiting for some support in the box. And whether it was a cross or a shot, it, it obviously doesn't really matter. But the fact is that uh, Katarina Svitkova was pretty much almost unmarked at the far post anyway. So if it came through to her, she would have finished it off. Yep, agreed. Defensively, obviously, areas that Manchester United can, can be better at there. But look for his team. Fantastic, isn't it? Look, they've got seven, eight minutes, maybe a little bit longer to try and get that other goal back. And maybe more. Who knows, eh? Fresh legs on the pitch, lots of energy. Can they keep the tempo up and can they create more opportunities? Well, they scored twice in the last 10 minutes to win 3-2 against Manchester United at home in December. Can they do it again? Can history repeat itself? Press picks it up, takes it first time. Oh, I thought she was going to slide that in for Galton then. She took the shot, didn't she? Oh, if she looks back at that, she'd probably think, oh, she could have slid that in because it was a great run by Galton. 
Press does pick it up. But that's uh, cut out, and Flaherty has it for West Ham. Here's Daly. Those more direct passes have been more effective for them since we've seen the substitutions being made and the, and the Czech Republic national team player, Svetkova, is far more effective holding balls up. And, and you, look, you can you can say maybe the detail of the pass might be a bit better than it was first half too, but she's been effective since she's come on the pitch. Bit of a nervy uh, last five minutes for Casey Stoney. She'll, you know, be thinking back the first half where they had umpteen opportunities and, and should have taken more. But definitely, you know, this point in the game, West Ham having a bit more of the play. West Ham haven't really created much, have they? Let's be honest, going forward. But the, the two chances they've had have both led to goals. Yeah, and when you do get the goals, it's great because confidence levels are up. Your energy suddenly, you know, you go from feeling tired to running about the place uh, with far more energy and enthusiasm. And look, you know, you can see from the from the, the side of the pitch, you know, um, coaches is, is is thinking they can get back in this definitely, and I'm sure the players are too. And maybe some nerves creeping into Manchester United's play as well. Yeah, obviously they've made some changes too. Uh, probably less effective in a way if you compare it to West Ham with how the game's gone since, but it is a case of giving those players opportunities to get into this game. They do pose a threat and they do have a set piece, Manchester United. Lucy Staniforth will take. Arriving in the summer after a two-year spell at Birmingham. She's going to take this free kick for the visitors. Who lead 3-2. And that's a yellow card for Dali for not retreating. Oh, that'll be a frustrating one for the boss, I'm sure. Uh, picking up... For Manchester United for Christian Press off the bench. And surely now Manchester United have wrapped up all three points. He lost her, hasn't she? Look, and touch it to the back of the net. Great. Great from her, great for her team. And, oh, disappointing for West Ham because we did think they had a chance to get back in this, didn't we? Well, she got her first league start last weekend, Christian Press, on the bench today. 31 years old now. She says she is still learning, despite her advancing years. And uh, she is up. That's not far away. It's been an interesting last 10 minutes, hasn't it? Chances each end. Good opportunity here. And again, look, we see uh, Daly creating this in a wide area. Three defenders around her, still managing to get a pass off to Daly. And Daly just pulling that, that shot wide, unfortunately for her. Not getting a great contact on it. Just pulls it to the, the left-hand side here. But good 1v1 uh, good situation there from Daly to get the ball over to Daly. But not great end product for West Ham. Van Egmond. Dali in behind. Gronen there doing some defending. Has to put it out for a throw. And Jane, uh, with what, 60 seconds or so on the clock, let me uh, think about your uh, player of the match. Yes, and it's the person we're looking at right now. Obviously, Russo, she, she obviously came off from the end of the game, but a uh, fantastic game from her. Mentioned it earlier, good hold-up play, good defensive work as well when she's needed to do it, and great finishes. Good into game from the, her. Into the final 60 seconds then. West Ham have it all to do if they're to get anything from this match now after Christian Press scoring the fourth goal for Manchester United. And he'll be disappointed again, having seen his side get within touching distance. Again, his side have seen it slip away. Yeah, they're having spells in the game, aren't they? You know, spells where they, they're dangerous and then spells where they defensively you could question organisation at times and reaction to transitions and it's been their downfall. But obviously, Casey Stoney will be particularly happy if they do manage to see this out, another three points in the bag for her team. All eyes on the uh, fourth official as we see how many added minutes we will have at the end of this second half and we will play a four additional minutes. Van Egmond for West Ham to uh, Joel. Cross is blocked by Gronin. Christian Press back doing some defending. 
And now Hansen will give chase. Long by Arnold. Gronen tidies up and finds press. Good footwork from the American, wins the free kick. Yes, followed all the way there by centre back Julie Flaherty, but uh, managing to keep the ball effectively under pressure. She'll be happy when she coming in as a substitution, getting a goal. Um, and look, there, there'll be spells of the game today. Manchester United will be very happy with. Obviously, they'll be disappointed with leaking the two goals so far. But um, good patches of play from them too. Hansen. Stand forth to press. Well, that was a chance, and I think she knows it. Yeah, probably a little bit surprised that she had that much space uh, in on the edge of the box there and obviously pulled, pulled the shot a little bit wide, but um, good first touch, good spin, but not quite the end product. And both Press and Heath up and running, Jane. That's good news for, for Manchester United, both getting their first goals in English football this afternoon. Well, you would expect it, wouldn't you? You know, the level of player they are and the positions they play. And yes, they've been very effective for their team in the moments they've played. Here is uh, Hansen. And, uh, Ockvist in an advanced position. Well, Manchester United scored from their last free kick in a similar position. Lucy Staniforth, the uh, substitute, already has one assist from an almost identical position. And uh, Press was just about to pull the trigger, but uh, Cho took the ball from her toes. Millie Turner is uh, in a little bit of discomfort in the final exchanges of this match. <laughs> Darley intercepted and Gronin can bring it forward for Manchester United. We've played our four minutes of stoppage time at the end of this second half. All eyes on Ryan Atkin, the man in the middle. And the final whistle does go. It is a victory for Casey Stoney's Manchester United. They've seen off West Ham by four goals to two. They didn't have it all their own way in this match with West Ham getting back into the game on a couple of occasions. But uh, the American duo Tobin Heath and Christian Press, both amongst the score sheets, a double for Alessia Russo. And Manchester United's unbeaten start to the season continues.